I'm receiving this award on behalf of the, all my team, who is the one who is doing the tough work, and that uh, we work with a lot of enthusiasm, but they are day by day fighting for moving forward the research. So thank you again for this award. It was a good friend of Mark Weinberg, and we really miss him because he always was a guy who uh, was very, very, uh, 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 how to say, enter he used to entertain all of us by jokes and by making fun everywhere, so we miss him. And uh, mm, this is my transparency, transparency declaration. And uh, mm, let me show where, where I'm, I'm, I'm working. So th this is a hospital which is called uh, German Stias y Pujol. And, uh, and this is on top of a hill, uh, North Barcelona. Uh, its popular name is Canruti. You know, this comes because in this neighborhood, there used to be a house from a guy from the Basque country, the north of Spain, the Basque, the Basque country. The, the family names are very special, very long, and the name was Urritico Echea, which is quite complicated. And then people usually short the names and say Ruti. And then that neighborhood was known as the house of this guy. And that's why the hospital took that name, that popular name from this, this house. When I began to work there uh, in 1983, I was 29 years old, um, there was nothing else than the two buildings here. And uh, we created, I uh, will show you a brief uh, history, our lab here, but these days, currently, so um, this uh, hospital and, and um, this area became one of the most important hubs of research in, in the whole Spain and the south of Europe, probably, because we have uh, the Foundation Carreras for Leukemia Research, is very well funded. Uh, also, we have cancer research, we have neuroscience research, which are very well known, and also we have uh, animal model facilities with, uh, with a P3 facility for animal research. So uh, we are really very, very proud of what we have achieved. And in some way, our initial lab was fostering all this research from other areas. So I, I'm, I just... Uh, no, I'm not going to go in detail with all these uh, time points, but I just want to let you know that um, in 1992, I created a foundation to support the clinical research. In 1993, the uh, foundation of a savings bank, La Caixa Foundation, donated some money to us to create the first lab. And then in 1995, they created the Irsi Caixa Foundation, and uh, um, there is an international scientific advisory board that is well known by all of you. Charles looks like a teenager here, but uh, it's a, a, a well uh, appreciated board that help us to guide and criticize. And in 2001, we built a new facility for a VSL3 facility that for the standards probably in Europe, in this country, in the United States, this might be tiny, but for us, it's huge. And uh, um, then we are very proud, and we are now building a new one close to this one. Again, so I would say that because we need money to, to, to be able to run the, the proof of concept projects of research, we, start, we started doing ch charity galas, and, and, uh, but uh, this is tough and, and uh, it's very time consuming, but it's money that allows you to, to run the proof of concept of different research lines. And what I am very proud is all my team these days, we are really focusing on all it's defined so far essential for eradicating HIV, which are therapeutic vaccines, prophylactic vaccines, neutralizing antibodies, immune globulins, microbiome, and uh, latency reactivating agents. So this is what we call the solar system, which is the, the cartoon that, uh, uh, of course, the sun is the HIV, but uh, studying the immunopathogenesis of this virus, 
this, this allowed us to, to move to many other, apparently sometimes unrelated areas of research that we call the planets. And my purpose in the following 20 minutes is to just highlight few of them because for the sake of the time and for the, because of the time frame I have, I cannot go into detail. Let me just say that we started doing clinical research. In fact, we started in 1987 in a trial with ribavirin because at that time nothing else we have uh, was available for us and trying to test if ribavirin could have some sort of efficacy in HIV infected people. Uh, that paper was published in, La in Lancet, but um, later on we, we were focusing, we were involved in different clinical trials testing all the most important strategies and these are shown here. Also, I belong, I have uh, I'm very happy because I have uh, uh, be, uh, I've been part of the IAS USA drug resistance mutations group, and currently is my colleague Roger Paredes who belongs to that group uh, and replaced me. Also, at the clinical level, we we, uh, we plan from our own design to run clinical trials to to work out different clinical problems like uh, lipodystrophy or lipoatrophy, so metabolic disturbances, um, so the DEXA scans and the osteopenia osteoporosis, and also now we are focusing in, in, on, on, on aging in HIV, and Eugenia Negredo from my clinical group is building a sort of, of big co international cohort that uh, will try to address all the issues related to to aging in our population. But uh, in 1993, we uh, began the basic research, and uh, at that time, uh, Javier Martinez Picado joined my group, and uh, I'm gonna start with his group, because it's one of the most, is probably is the most important group in my, in my lab, uh, the Javier's one. And um, Javier did a, a, a sort of postdoc uh, with Rich Aquila in Boston for more than three years, uh, and uh, he was working uh, uh, at, in fitness, in viral fitness at that time. And, uh, but uh, later on, he has uh, conducted clinical trials who has been, that has been quite <coughs> important because he um, ran a clinical trial intensifying with raltegravir and showed some sort of increases in 12 TRs mostly in those on PI-based therapies that could tell us that uh, these guys were having some ongoing viral replication. But because it's well known that many people debate that, and I'm not going to enter into this debate now, but these papers were important. But also what I really um, appreciate is that he was brilliant, and his team uh, with Nuria Izquierdo, uh, they found that cialyl lactose in viral membrane, uh, so gangliocytes containing this cellular lactose uh, are a novel molecular recognition pattern for mature dendritic cells when these mature dendritic cells captures the HIV. So this, the finding of this, recept this receptor was important because the cyclic one Will, uh, will bind to the cellular lactose, which is present in the envelope of the virus. When the virus uh, leaves, uh, uh, is free from the cells, it ca captures the cellular lactose from the cellular membrane, and this is what is captured by the cyclic one. And then the vesicles uh, contain uh, the virus, and then uh, transports the virus to the uh, lymphoid tissue and the transinfection is produced. But uh, when he found this, uh, he thought that perhaps we could construct nanoparticles that could uh, be co coated with uh, platelet membranes and that could contain viral peptides and also latency reactivating agents that these uh, nanoparticles could be captured and then uh, by, by dendritic cells, and they will be free at, 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 in some sort of random, at random manner in the, in, in, inside the dendritic cells and be processed at the proteasome 
and then presented at the CDAT cells. And if um, uh, there were uh, peptides as a vaccine, therapeutic vaccine, that could be used to really boost the CD80 cell response. And also the latency reactivating agents could be uh, taken to the right place at the lymph node to reactivate the dormant virus. But he found also, and Nuri Izquierda did this work, that the gangliosides were also, the salyl lactose were also present in the Ebola virus. And uh, he found that uh, anti B set domain antibodies to uh, uh, this, this gray area of cyclic one block the infection of HIV, of course, but also of Ebola. And uh, the Ebola virus uh, is blocked any sort of variants of Ebola virus. And this could become a complement, uh, that, that could become, sorry, a, a complementary uh, um, drug or weapon uh, to fight Ebola together with the vaccine. Javier also is working in CURE, and uh, uh, Monique uh, Niehaus, uh, Niehaus, did I present it, did I pronounce well, Monique? Yes, fine. Yeah, Niehaus. Monique presented yesterday afternoon um, the, the uh, iSystem Consortium, uh, but I only want to highlight that, uh, like Timothy Brown, we had a patient that was cured, but died of a relapse of the lymphoma. So it's not comparable to Timothy Brown, who fortunately is alive. But um, that, that took, took uh, Javier to, uh, to join, uh, join Anne-Marie Wansing from the Netherlands and to construct this cons consortium. And just to make the story short, because uh, Monique again uh, uh, went through this uh, yesterday afternoon, there's a handful of guys that have undetectable viral reservoir and that uh, when uh, we use mouse viral growth assay, uh, these guys, uh, in this uh, handful of guys, we don't find cell-associated HIV uh, uh, DNA. And, and we also, when we look at the ileum, at the gout, we don't find any sort of reservoir in these patients. Uh, of course, as she said, Monique, uh, yesterday, so they are planning to interrupt with different strategies. I'm not gonna talk about that. But that um, made possible that Javier uh, focus on, on a cohort that we have. So we, my unit, we take care of more than 3,000 HIV-infected patients. And then we harbor, we, we, we we collect samples of, of all these patients at baseline and then after different time points and different sort of samples, even also feces. And then we, uh, Javier found that 9% of a group of 453 patients have no detectable viral reservoir and they don't have a protect, a protective HLA. So and he's trying to find out which is the explanation for this percentage and if we, ha we can learn more about this. So this is that system. And then um, and th let's move now to another team in my, in my research lab, which is constituted by Julia Blanco and Jorge Carrillo that are uh, terrific immunologists and they created the BLPs um, and so BLPs are well known, but they modified BLPs uh, in order that uh, they uh, maximize the antigen presentation and increase the immunogenicity. And this is a pattern uh, from our lab. And this, uh, uh, what happens with the standard BLPs is that the, the, uh, the, the uh, antigens are presented but are not very, uh, very frequently, uh, very predominant, but then with our modification, we increase 100 times this presentation of antigens, antigens and we can even modify, uh, modify the inner part of, of the particles. We are working with a supercomputing center in Barcelona, and we aim to define high affinity. This, they have a sort of a very, very sophisticated software. It's a very important supercomputing center, and then we try to define high affinity BNAPs against CD4 binding site and to elicit such antibodies using our BLPs platform. But we use this platform also to do research 
uh, uh, and to focus on, on treponemas, and uh, we pursue a vaccine for treponema uh, pertenue, which is the, the uh, producing uh, tropical ulcers, and this is because a guy uh, who has devoted his life to this, Oriol Micha, joined my group now, and also to treponema pallium for syphilis, to leukemia, feline leukemia, and together, thanks to Merck, to respiratory viruses these days. We are working on that. And we are also uh, working on BLPs-based vaccines uh, for cancer and also uh, designing DNA vaccines with the same purpose. And uh, we plan to use these as therapeutic personalized vaccines. And we are working with the Bio Center, which is a very important center for cancer research in Barcelona. And we plan to identify the best two most candidates for prophylactic vaccines, uh, trying to assess which would be the most suitable neoantigens, or trying to target some uh, virus-related tumors or tumor-specific antigens. And these days, we are running uh, the, the proof of concept in the, in the MURIM model for melanoma. And uh, we are waiting for the results as the prophylactic vaccination and therapeutic vaccination for melanoma. So as uh, Charles said, so we have had the opportunity to, to create uh, biotech companies. And uh, I will highlight the, the Alba Juna one, just to clarify, Alba is the name of the daughter of uh, uh, Jorge Carrillo, and Juna is my, the name of my granddaughter. So we decided to, to combine both names, and this is why uh, we call Alba Juna Therapeutics. And then we have modified, uh, we have created modified immune globulins, so multifunctional antibodies, with a, a, a coverage of 100% sort, and it isolates that we have, uh, of all clades that we have tested, are are are, are covered by by these multifunctional antibodies, and they also have a very high ADCC activity, which is what makes us to be um, uh, very, very, very happy and to expect some results. And we plan to, to start clinical trials in the beginning of 2020. So if the ADCC works, so a part of blocking the virus when stopping medication, we could, uh, and if nobody could escape from these modified immune globulins, we could also be with thanks to the ADCC to start destroying the viral reservoir. And the other company is Alix. Alix was created uh, with Johnson & Johnson with capital risk from ASIOS and also cash capital risk. And we are running phase one clinical trials to assess safety and immunogenicity of our HTI immunogen. And just to highlight that this HTI immunogen is based on the observation that the cell responses to certain regions of HIV are enriched in individuals with a non-progressor clinical phenotype. And the, the HTI combines these regions that I highlighted in blue. And then, uh, of course, the CTL response to peptides from these beneficial regions correlate strongly with the percentage of viral inhibition. And uh, we are very happy because we reached an agreement with Gilead to run a clinical trial combining our vaccine with TLR, TLR7 that will, began, uh, will begin in, in, in February next year. Uh, combining a Chimadeno MBA uh, approach with HTI together with TLR7. And uh, uh, we hope that we could show some impact. We will run this clinical trial in our hospital and in two centers in Madrid. And we have a big facility there and a CRO there. And uh, we have a big cohort that, uh, of recently infected patients. And every month we recruit in between three and five new entries. And uh, uh, hopefully combining, this is a sort of cartoon summarizing the multiple strategies for eradication that we believe that could end up by curing uh, the infection. And uh, now we are going to be capable of combining TLR7 plus our vaccine, and hopefully boosting the CTL response together with the, uh, the action of TLR7, we can show some impact we could uh, hopefully we we we, uh, we could uh, show some some impact in the viral reservoir. 
Finally, I want to uh, also mention Roger Paredes' team. Roger probably is the younger in my, in my group, but he also did his uh, PhD in Boston with Dan Kuriskis, uh, focusing on minority variants. Uh, but now he also is focusing on, on microbiome, and we know that microbiome is impacted by the infection, that HIV causes this, that, this biosis, and that uh, Rouget showed in a recent, recent paper that the low nadir CD4 counts predict the, 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 this biosis in HIV infection. So the, the higher the nadir, the lower the dysbiosis is present in HIV-infected patients. And he also did an important trial in which uh, assessing the, the microbiome in, in, in HIV-infected population, he found that prebotella-rich microbiome is linked to MSM. Rouget is now focusing also in, in a disease which apparently far from, from, from uh, HIV, but might be linked to HIV because of the uh, microbiome um, uh, disturbances that might exist in the setting of uh, people at risk of, of uh, Alzheimer's disease. And we have a cohort with a team in Barcelona, Marcel Boada, who has 120 people who has no neurocognitive impairment, but is at risk of suffering the, the Alzheimer's disease. And uh, we have two time points collected feces, and with shotgun we are going to study these patients just to find out if there are any specific marker for this, um, for this uh, disease as a prognostic risk uh, for, for suffering later on uh, more Alzheimer. Also, we are going to study milk cognitive impairment uh, 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 and uh, Alzheimer uh, disease uh, and patients suffering already Alzheimer disease. So in summary, microbiome will be also linked to HIV cure because uh, the vaccines might, uh, um, Roger is assessing also uh, from the animal model and in a good collaboration with people in, in United States to, to assess the microbiome in feces of, of uh, monkeys that uh, underwent a vaccine uh, that were challenged with vaccine and to see how the response is linked to this microbiome uh, or specific uh, characteristics of the microbiome. Also to the cancer and it's well known and to the Alzheimer's disease. And last, I want just to highlight the, 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 this team of nuns that uh, are great people. So. We work with Sor Maria Lisa Verdu at Carmelo Hospital in Shokwe in Mozambique, uh, where the prevalence is 25%. And uh, we, we really collaborate with them because I, I send people from my group there to, to, to help them in the daily care of, they, they take care of more than 10,000 infected people, but we also design clinical trials. And Roger did this clinical trial in collaboration in Mozambique also trying to assess because the prevalence there of, of, of the presence of, of a, uh, primary resistance mutation is, is higher than the usual one in, in Europe or United States. And then they found that probably the uh, next generation sequencing cut, cutoff should be 5%, uh, not the, the, the one that of 20% with the bulk genotype, but, but should not be below, but we, we increase uh, knowledge and we manage much better people if we uh, uh, select the 5% uh, of the presence of, of minority variants for managing more properly these patients. So and this is uh, the final slide just to refresh you what we call the, the solar system and our, our sun, our, our planets. And hopefully with all this research, we will help to improve the global health and uh, we are very enthusiastic uh, with all our projects. And uh, um, I thank you very much for this award and for your attention. Thank you.